Hello there, my movie peeps. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We've got movie news to discuss, so let's get into it. Some of the things we're going to be discussing here today, guys, is I'll quickly give you my thoughts on the Oscar nominations. We got the release of Netflix's Avatar and The Last Airbender, along with the announcement that a new Jurassic World movie is headed our way. Really, that alone is so much more, so leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and well, let's jump into our first thing here today, starting off with the trailer for the live-action Avatar and The Last Airbender. Now, a lot of you guys have been highly anticipating this and a lot of us still have a sour taste in our mouths from the last live action interpretation of this franchise but everything from this two minute and 30 second trailer only gives me the highest of hopes this thing looks like a major upgrade from what we got last time it's kind of insane to me how different tv shows are made nowadays it wasn't that long ago that like 10 years ago a tv show it was pretty much expected that it would look lower budget that it wouldn't look as big as the movies now you have tv shows that have budgets that rival movies and here with avatar and the last airbender it looks like they spent every pretty penny now i occasionally watched an episode here and there i wouldn't consider myself the biggest avatar fan something like this is definitely up my alley because they'll get some of the basic bigger stories out of the way but i am very curious to see how this all comes together my one hesitation is remembering that the creators of avatar and the last airbender they quit in the making of this show they had some sort of disagreement with netflix and the way they were running the show i'm curious if fans will be able to notice what that major disagreement is or maybe this will just turn out to be another major success because lately netflix has been doing quite well with their live action adaptations overall though this looks good to me i'm curious to see what you guys think about it then from there the other big thing that everybody was discussing here today is the nominations for the oscars were let out now i'm someone that doesn't do a lot of oscar or high caliber movie talk on here sometimes i feel like that's out of my league i like to just get excited about the random pop popcorn adventure movie and I think there's nothing wrong with that but even though I don't talk about it much here on the channel oh I check out all the Oscar nominated movies I look into the performances I actually do get into this and so with the nominations they revealed here today I did have a couple of thoughts for one I was really happy to see that Godzilla minus one did get a nomination not for best international film but for best visual effects it was put there in a category alongside the creator Guardians of the Galaxy 3 Mission Impossible and Napoleon a good little group but I'm just so happy to see that Godzilla minus one got some sort of recognition because the VFX definitely blew me away and it was also nice to see that video online of the creative team getting so excited with their little Godzilla toys right there man when looking at like the best animated features I was surprised to see that TMNT did not make it on the list very happy though that Nimona did that's one I highly recommend to you if you have not seen it that was one of my biggest surprises of last year when I checked it out and you know what I'm hoping across the spider-verse takes the win here although I feel like it's gonna be the boy and the heron and you know discussing films actually put together a really great list of the things a lot of people were complaining when the Oscar nominations were let out. Things like no Leonardo DiCaprio or Zac Efron for Best Actor. And yeah, that's definitely something that stands out. No Iron Claw nominations whatsoever. Not for the movie, not for the actors and their performances. And oh, that stings. A lot of people say it was because that movie just came out a little too late and not a lot of the voters got to see it in time. But Zac Efron deserves some sort of nomination, man. Not just for the acting, but for the physical performance and what he put his body through. That has to account for something. Also, a lot of people were seeing a lot of Barbie snubs here with like Greta Gerwig not being added to the best director category and if you look at the rest of the things that Barbie was added on to it's so weird that Greta Gerwig did not get that nom but I didn't think it was going to matter all that much because we know Christopher Nolan's taking that category same thing when like it comes to the best picture category a lot of good movies in there not many surprises I felt like everyone mainly expected these films to be on there I would have liked Iron Claw but that didn't happen but either way not gonna matter because Oppenheimer is taking it it's gonna be curious to see how many wins Oppenheimer gets because I feel like it's gonna sweep this year at the Oscars I don't know that was just some of my thoughts from this nomination it'll be interesting to see who wins who gets a steal but uh what are your guys' thoughts on the Oscar noms moving on here we got a plot detail revealed online for the upcoming live action Lion King prequel titled Mufasa and I gotta say I'm extremely mixed on the direction of this movie so going here with the plot they have they say after a terrible flood separates the young lion Mufasa from his parents his life is saved by another lion cub named Taka. Mufasa and Taka grow up like brothers, but years later, the lions are almost grown. Another group of dangerous lions threatens the existence of them, and Mufasa and Taka have to flee together. There they encounter both new allies and many dangers, and their loyalty to each other is also put to the test, because which of them is really destined to rule as the Lion King, and at what 
price. That definitely sounds like a plot right there. It seems like it has the makings to be a grand adventure. Although I wasn't a big fan of the live action interpretation of The Lion King because it just didn't hit emotionally the same as the 2D animated version. There's definitely things in here that I could see working, especially with Barry Jenkins as a director. But we know the ending of this story and we know where it's headed towards. And I felt like that was a lot of the complaints we were seeing online. Like obviously this Taka character is Scar. And also that line about who is dead destined to be the Lion King. Spoiler alert, it's Mufasa. But hopefully there's something here where it makes it worthwhile and the emotions can hit better than they did the first time around. You guys hear this plot for the upcoming Lion King prequel, Mufasa. Do you like it? Moving on here, I want to talk a little bit about the upcoming Daredevil series on Disney Plus Born Again, because man, they have changed things around. So if you haven't been keeping up with the Daredevil news, and I don't blame you, a lot of us could care less now about these Disney Plus shows, I was still very curious to see what they would do with Daredevil Born Again, because for the longest time, it was known that it was a soft reboot of the character. Although you're bringing back Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, it was always kind of hinted that it wouldn't be the same universe as the Netflix series. Well, recently, a lot of things have happened and Kevin Feige was just not loving the quality of the Disney Plus shows along with a lot of the fans. That's then where they fired the previous team. They had filmed six episodes and they're going to end up scrapping a couple of the episodes. We're going to start back from the beginning and now it's looking more and more likely like this Daredevil Born Again show is just Daredevil season four. They confirmed when Echo came out that the Netflix shows are now all canon to the MCU and are part of the world. We got in reports that both Foggy and Karen are going to be coming back back to the show when originally they were going to be killed off screen in the new series. Today, it just got announced that Wilson Bethel will be returning as Bullseye. He was the villain left alive in season three. This is kind of a crazy turnaround for Daredevil. And when you really start to think about it, it's a super smart decision by Disney and Marvel. The reason for the longest time people like me and others were telling you it's a soft reboot, it's just not going to go that way, and even Kevin Feige and Marvel were doing it, it was because for a while that Netflix show was on Netflix. And heck, even when people reference that Daredevil show, they call it the Netflix show. So it always seemed counterproductive for Marvel to make a direct sequel to that series when it feels like you would just be promoting Netflix. But now that Disney actually owns those shows, they are on their platform, I think they finally realize the value of it. Now when you make this a full season four continuation, what does that mean? That means you're gonna have so many fans that are now gonna have to go back and watch three seasons of an already made and produced show that's sitting on your Disney Plus platform. And what do streaming services love? Watch time, people jumping on. I think they found a great loophole to take advantage of that both made the fans happy and made Marvel happy. Now, if they meet the quality of that show, that's a whole different thing. I'm hopeful that they do. I mean, there was even a report that they brought back the same fight choreography team from the Daredevil show for this new series. Even with the Punisher being included in it, there's gonna be elements where they reference his Netflix Punisher show. I'm just having a lot of hopes here and it's just kind of crazy to see how much Marvel has turned around on not wanting to connect this to the Netflix series. This is then where I throw it off to you guys. Uh, you hear how much the Daredevil show has changed from what they once thought they were going to do to now just kind of following in the footsteps of Netflix. Good idea, bad idea. And well, that brings us into the news that we got surprisingly yesterday that we are getting a new Jurassic World movie. Revealed here by The Hollywood Reporter, they say new Jurassic World movie in the works with David Kep writing. Now, if you don't know, David Kep is actually the one who wrote the first two Jurassic Park movies. That's the original one with Steven Spielberg and The Lost World, the sequel. Two movies that I think most people would argue are probably the best of the Jurassic Park series. In the article, they also state that they've actually been working on this script and story for a while now, that it's deep into production, and specifically saying here, the project has been flying under the radar, is far enough along, and the script is in well-like shape that the studio is whispering of a possible 2025 release date. So they're far enough along where shooting for this movie is going to begin looking like this summer and it'll be released next year, which it's still crazy to hear 2025 is next year. 
to me, that still sounds like so far away. And then here's where we get into some of the confusing details about the movie, because they say it is unclear what form the relaunch is taking. It is known to be launching a new Jurassic era per sources with an all new storyline that would seem to rule out the return of characters played by Jurassic World star Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. And it seems characters featured in the original Jurassic Park movies played by Sam Neill, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum would not be involved. So that's kind of the thing here. Although they announced this movie as being a new Jurassic World movie, we're kind of 50 50 here on whether it's a reboot or a continuation of what they've already set up. What seems pretty clear though is that like Chris Pratt and those characters from the last movie are not coming back. But what I mean by continuation of that world is it could be a sequel to what they've already set up, a world full of dinosaurs, them left and right, living amongst us, and a new story with new characters there. And I gotta be honest, I don't think I would love that idea. Jurassic World Dominion was one of those movies that really disappointed me as a Jurassic Park fan. I've always loved this franchise, but I just have no idea how the latest trilogy blew the idea of dinosaurs everywhere and it just wasn't that interesting. Jurassic Park became one of those franchises that used to be known for having horror thrilling elements but then ended up becoming an action franchise where the latest movie felt like Fast and Furious with dinosaurs. So part of me would kind of hope that it would just be a soft reboot going back to the park idea because I felt like that's what was always best right. I love that first movie. I even like the first Jurassic World because of the theme park element. I don't think you have to take the story so grand where you're cloning girls and then military trained dinosaurs and whatnot i felt like it stretched itself in a way where jurassic park wasn't meant to go still we'll have to wait and see here they're obviously calling it jurassic world so it seems like it'll be a continuation of the dinosaur world but uh i throw it off to you guys what would you like to see be done in a new Jurassic Park movie? Anyways, guys, that is all the movie news currently have going on right now. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.